Good morning. Welcome to you on this bright morning. Welcome to worship with Grace United Church. My name is Kenji Marui. I use he, him as pronouns. I'm part of the pastoral team with this inclusive intergenerational community partner in North Sarnia. We intentionally make a space and place for people of every gender expression and sexual orientation. We are delighted that of all of the other things that you could be doing instead with your time and your attention, you have chosen to worship with us. Our news and our announcements are in the weekly email blast that comes from the office. We do have some printed copies of these announcements that are available in the church narthex in the lobby that's behind you. Uh, this afternoon, we have board games happening in room one, which also happens to overlap with the time for Lambton Center's annual meeting at Camlack United Church with lunch at 12.30 for, for that meeting. The search committee has extended the application deadline for an office administrator uh, to February the 11th. So again, please invite anyone and everyone you know who might be a good fit for this role to contact the office uh, for the job posting or to get connected about what that process entails and involves. Uh, one of our community partners, Ray John, is uh, going to be hiring a, uh, a new executive director. And so that is uh, something else that you might uh, want to share and spread to uh, people that you know who might be a good fit for that. I think those are the, the pieces that I just wanted to mention to you at this point in time, unless I'm missing something, forgetting something, or got something totally wrong on the details. Yes. Right. We are uh, currently, we don't have... Um, organizers for a pancake supper. Uh, Easter is very early this year, which means that Lent is very early this year, which means pancake supper is February the 13th. Uh, so we don't have anybody um, that has uh, stepped forward to organize that. Uh, some peop people have done it in the past. There would be lots of help, but uh, we do need uh, some folks to kind of take the lead and, and then to help out once we get that ball rolling. So that is something that we um, maybe might be a priority on our list. Bev, do they talk to you? Sure. All right. Or, or t yeah, talk to Pat about uh, how that might roll out. Thank you in advance, uh, and uh, please consider uh, uh, that work. Thanks for that. Anything else? We're good. Our indigenous acknowledgement today moves from the land uh, into the sky. The moon is waxing in the shortening nights and will become full during our coming week. And in the Ojibwe calendar, the first moon of creation is spirit moon, which is manifested through the northern lights. Indigenous observers use this time of year to honor silence and to realize our place within all of great mysteries creatures. As Mark brings us into worship with the prelude, let us keep our silence to connect with our place among the created beings that fill this world. Let us open ourselves to the stories that are beyond our own. Let us risk challenge and disagreement that we might know better our own hearts and minds and spirits. Let us find our place and let us find our peace.
In this wonderful world, let us come together in this time of worship. Our call to worship will proceed responsively on the screens before you. In the midst of the world's chaos, we come to this place and time finding powerful peace. When minds are overwhelmed with too much information or anxiety, we come to this place and time finding persistent hope. If hearts are heavy with fear, with worry, with sorrow, we come to this place and time finding shared strength. If longing for a community in a world torn apart, we come to this place and time finding unconditional love. Come all as ourselves and let us worship. We sing together of a light that is gleaming.
Let us pray. Wondrous God, you fill our lives with healing and with restoration. New life is your gift. We praise you for the good news that is ours through Jesus Christ. May this time of worship nourish us with your promise of meaning and purpose. May we be empowered to carry your goodness into the coming week. Bless the gifts we make of our time, our talents and treasures for the work of healing and hope. For this, your community, your people, your world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And in the light of this bright morning, I invite uh, us to share the peace of Christ with each other. I'll take a few moments to turn to the people nearby and introduce yourself if you need to and catch up on your news if you want and wish one another the peace of Christ, the peace of Christ that endures and shines and calls us forward as people of the light, as people of sharing, as people of story. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. this out. Do you want to hear the big people make a funny noise? Yeah? Are we up for it? All right. Listen to this. Where, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You met another and I don't know if you caught that, but the big people are making tooting sounds in the middle of worship. Let's try that again. Where, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You met another and he was gone. Do you remember that? Hee haw! What night was that? Sunday nights? Sunday night hee haw. So a long time ago, like even before your parents were born, 
There was a show on TV uh, called Hee Haw on Sunday nights, and this is one of the fun songs from it. And isn't it funny that all these years later, they still remember the lyrics, probably because there's tooting sounds in it. <laughs> yeah, and isn't it funny that even like generations can come together around this song? Well, how about watch this? Maybe listen for your parents on this one. I got my first real six string. Played it till my fingers bled. So back when your parents were like younger, they had long hair <laughs> and they would go to concerts and just get silly. And this is one of the songs that they would sing when they would go to whose concert? Brian Adams. And this is back in like 1980, 1982, 83, a long time ago. And isn't it funny that they still remember that we can still come together around these songs. Okay, check this out. Check this out. Choir. Watch this. For God so loved the world. Have you heard that before? Try that again. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Does anyone know that? You just heard it now? A million dollars, if anyone knows where that comes from. John 3.16. John 3.16. You've watched a lot of sporting events. <laughs> <laughs> or you grew up in Sunday school. <laughs> One of the two. Isn't it something that we all just kind of know that? Isn't it something that we all just kind of gather together around that thing. Well, watch this. Everybody. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we come together, this is what we do. We share these things, these poems, these songs, these prayers that remind us that we belong to each other. We gather around this thing and we do it together and it reminds us that we belong to each other. It's called a ritual. Well, watch this. I want you to trust me. Come on no? Watch this. Ready? Ready? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who is come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and in others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified <laughs> and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Isn't it, isn't it lovely that we come together around these things that help us to embed meaning in time? And we do it together. Just like this. Peace be with you.
and also with you. Yes. Let's do one more before we head out to children's worship. Let's stand and exchange blessings with the adults. So let's stand and find somebody out there with your eyeballs. You got them? Your loudest voices. May God bless you as you stay to hear God's word. May God bless you as you go to hear God's word. On your mark, get set, and go. The First Nations version of the New Testament brings the scripture with the names of people and places in the manner of indigenous cultures. Mark, known as War Club, presents the good story of healing and encountering demons in chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. Let us hear an encounter that makes us consider evil, hurt, and harm, but also leads us to healing, wholeness, restoration, and revelation. <clears throat> when they finished crossing the lake, they came to the territory of many spirits, the Gerasenes. As soon as Creator sets free, Jesus stepped from the canoe, a man who was tormented by an unclean spirit came up to him. This man had been living at the local burial grounds and no one could bind him, not even with iron chains. The people of the village had tried to capture the man and tie him down, but he would tear their ropes and break their chains. No one was strong enough to overpower him. Day and night, he, he wandered about the burial grounds and into the mountains. He would never stop wailing and cutting himself with sharp stones. When the man saw Creator sets free from a distance, he ran up to him and bowed down before him. Creator sets free, son of the one above us all, what are you going to do with us? The unclean spirits cried out through the man. Promise me by the great spirit that you will not torment us. The unclean spirit said this because creator sets free had said to the man, come out of him, you unclean spirit. Then creator sets free asked, what is the name of the spirit you represent? Our name is many soldiers, the evil spirits answered, for our numbers are great. They kept begging him not to send them out of the territory. There was a large herd of about 2,000 pigs feeding nearby on the side of a mountain. Send us to those pigs over there, they begged, so we can enter into them. So he gave them permission. The unclean spirits then came out of the man and entered into the herd of about 2,000 pigs. Then the whole herd stampeded down the mountainside headlong into the lake and drowned in the deep water, making a, a frightful scene. The local ones who were watching over the pigs rushed away, shaken and afraid. They went to the nearby village and told everyone all that had happened. As word spread, people came from the villages and the countryside to see for themselves. There they found the man who had been tormented by the unclean spirit sitting quietly at the feet of Creator Sets Free. He was clothed and in his right mind, and the people trembled with fear as they listened to the story of how the man was set free and to the story about the pigs. So they begged, so they begged Creator Sets Free to go away from the land. As Creator Sets Free was climbing into his canoe to leave, the man who had been set free from the evil spirits begged him to take him along, but Creator Sets Free would not permit it, permit it, and said to the man, return home to your family and friends. Tell them all the good and kind things the Great Spirit has done for you. The man went his way and told the story far and wide in all the territory of the ten villages of what Creator Sets Free had done for him, and all who heard were amazed. The amazing, unbelievable words of Christ do not fit easily into our scientific, clinical worldview. 
may we be open to the interpretation of belief and power that assure us of God's goodness and greatness, of grace flowing, flowing through hope. Let us sing together. God, we do not understand every aspect of this creation and the ills that plague our people, but we know of your power. We know of your healing that is possible. We pray that such strength will be with us as we seek to live our lives in faith. Be with us this morning in the prayers that we pray, the songs that we sing, the words that we say and hear, may they be blessed by you, O God, our strength, our refuge, and our redeemer. Amen. In this section of Mark's gospel, we learn of all of the power that Jesus possesses. So the preceding verses proclaim his power over the workings of nature. When Jesus awoken from a nap, calms a wild storm on the Sea of Galilee. Maybe blown off course, they stop in the territory of many spirits on the eastern shore of that great lake, in one of the ten villages that makes the Decapolis, non-Jewish communities under the rule of the Roman Empire. Now here, Jesus demonstrates power over all manner of spirits. In an age where people attributed outcomes of every incident and event to spiritual forces of good or ill, demons accounted for mental health concerns. Now, lest we smugly condescend and smirk at the primitive backwardness of biblical society, 
I will remind this enlightened audience that we are not so far removed from hysteria being treated as a medical condition cured by inducing orgasms in women and prescribing marital sex, pregnancy, and childbirth. Moving on. <laughs> I do not have much personal experience in multiple personality or dissociative disorders, but I do know what it is like to carry different identities within one being. So depending on location, context, time of week even, I am a different person to different people. I am a preacher. I am a child of God. I'm a child of my parents. I am a parent myself. I am a partner. I am a coffee snob. I am a regular spin and kettlebell class attendee at my YMCA. I am a basketball devotee, loyal to my Raptors. Better luck next year. I am a fair weather 49ers fan. I am a proud patron of Canadian independent musicians. I am a cruciverbalist. I am a curmudgeon, annoyed by shopping carts and conversations parked mid aisle in the grocery store. <laughs> I especially dislike sampling stations in Costco. I wonder why kids these days can't make phone calls, return or leave voicemail messages. And I also advocate for kids, for youth and their place in church and society. All these components fit together to make me the marvel of humanity that I am. <laughs> Humble too. Each of us hold many soldiers, myriad aspects of our personality. We contain multitudes. We are legion. When these various component parts do not mesh, clash with each other, and prove incompatible, incompatible and combative due to brain chemistry or trauma, the disconnection within self leads to expressed behaviors that an earlier society might label as demonic. Regarding this scriptural story of the possessed man through our advanced medical understanding, I am inclined to look beyond the unclean spirits and the pigs even, and give more attention to the events of what happened after. The man begs to go with Jesus into the boat and onto grand new adventures. He begs to join the entourage. We can easily imagine why, out of loyalty and gratitude, drawn to the power of God contained within Jesus, too many bridges burned in his hometown, nothing left to keep him around. The people of the region reject the miracle. Maybe they're noting the sudden bankruptcy of those pig farmers or they fear the full power of this stranger called Christ. They apparently prefer the lives that they're accustomed to and comfortable with, where illness can be isolated and quarantined, where you look to your own business and let others take care of themselves. Realizing no place existed for him among his own people anymore, the healed man attempts to follow Christ. And for the first time in Mark's gospel, Jesus refuses a follower. Up until now, Jesus had been calling disciples away from their fishing nets and from their tax collection tables. He had been inviting people to follow him. <coughs> Not this one. The healed man begged to go with Jesus, but maybe the boat was already at capacity? Well, oh, certainly Jesus had other plans for him. Up to this point, Jesus had been telling the people that he'd healed and cleansed and restored to say nothing. He swore them to keep the messianic secret. None of them did. But here, this time, he tells the man to go out and tell the story, to share the good news broadly and widely, loudly. This is the harder thing to do. Easy to leave to leave behind the bad feelings, to leave the negative experiences, to avoid the consequences of previous actions, to escape all of the awkwardness. How difficult to stay in his community, to hang around and make amends with everyone that he had hurt and harmed during the time the unclean spirits held sway. 
To his credit, he, he remained to rebuild his life and reclaim his place. He didn't leave and reinvent himself. He stayed and he faced his demons. He dealt with the hard task of restoring relationships, of proving himself, of re-earning trust, and doing so proclaiming the goodness and kindness of the Great Spirit, of the God who is Jesus, of Creator sets free, born of the Jewish faith, ministering to the Gentiles. He tells the story of his previous life, that within his consciousness, thousands of raging voices, many soldiers, dark powers and debilitating insults waged war with his own spirit. And driven from community and isolated from the support of any family and friends, he lived among the tombs, unclothed and uncared for. A man gave witness to his truth, and he shares how Christ came along and changed everything. The power play proved impressive and intimidating that Jesus could compel a legion of unclean spirits to obey his word is reassuring and frightening at the same time. And he succeeds, Jesus does, in a place where he should theoretically be at his weakest. Jesus stood on foreign soil opposite Galilee, far from any source of strength or familiarity. Like everything about this encounter is ritually unclean to a faithful Jew like Jesus, a Gentile man possessed by evil, living among the dead, herds of swine all around. Yet he easily heals the man, delivering him from evil as if it was nothing at all. Except Jesus not only thwarts the will and intentions of the unclean spirits, he opposes the wishes of the healed man as well. Jesus becomes a force of negation, unyielding to the desires of those around him. In the relational and dialogical nature of our being, we define ourselves in accordance with limitations imposed upon us. And much of our North American Hollywood narrative rallies around the hero, overcoming every challenge and obstacle. Is that real life though I, I don't mean to be defeatist or fatalistic or disenfranchised or disempowering when i give credence to these challenges and to these obstacles maybe there's something there something worthy holy and wholesome can emerge from an earnest and grounded response to those who present a differing viewpoint a challenge Opposition and negation force us to reconsider the sureness of our position, humbling our ego, blunting our arrogance. Our enemies also operate from a sense of truth and conviction that, that should give us pause for recalibration. How do we respond when we encounter opposition and resistance, when our wishes are denied? Life requires resilience and adaptation. And Jesus presents a truth that constructively negates the earthly inclinations of those that he meets. He presents an opposition that will not relent, meeting strength with strength. The healed man doesn't press the issue, doesn't attempt to board the boat and stage a sit-in, does not insist that he is right and Jesus is wrong. The healed man encountered this opposition, found it to be holy, and diverted onto a different path. Responding with willingness, returning to his home, his friends and his family, he proved to be seed sown in good soil, ready to produce a yield of 30, 60, or even a hundredfold. This previously possessed man did as instructed, going out through the 10 villages of the Gentile Decapolis, telling the story of the Lord Jesus and the restorative power of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. In telling his story, this man, in sharing his truth and vulnerability, in remaining behind, he forged real connections with real people. The power of testimony, of sharing how God worked in his life, amazed all who heard, brought him back into the community that had shunned him. 
The work of spiritual resonance requires openness to the stories of others. The antidote for the accelerated secular age that plagues our consciousness is awareness and appreciation of others, of transcendence, breaking through our self-absorbed, self-constructed selves. When we open ourselves to the stories of others, to stories that force us to consider other viewpoints and realities, we grow and mature in our own identities. Which is why I want to introduce a time of story sharing and worship during the church season of Lent that is coming up. Consider this your formal invitation to do as the healed man and share the story of creator's goodness and kindness in your life. And I can reassure you that we have a kind hearted and generous congregation that will receive you with gratitude and grace. In upcoming Sundays, time is available for anyone who wants to share a few words about who God is for you, what God has done for your life. And it doesn't have to be as dramatic as a legion of unclean spirits being exercised from your soul. But I do have some ground rules that I will insist on. One, it has to be true to you. It must be your story. And two, it has to be about God. Aside from that, it can be anything that is on your heart. I'd be happy to work with you on it. If you like, we can pre-record it if that would be more comfortable. Let's share stories and continue to make real connections with real people, with you, among you, between you. Many soldiers reside in within our respective beings. We contain multitudes and myriads, a legion of characters and qualities that makes me, me, and, and you, you. And in our relationship, we become that nebulous us, that confounding connection that is community. We negate and reinforce our narratives. We challenge and sustain each other. We work together. We worship together. We wonder together. We love and are loved, we belong to God and to one another. That is the true power and the glory of Christ, of creator who sets us free. Now, I was going to go into the creed that Pat already did with our children. We can do it again um, because we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, Proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy, loving, healing God, we come before you today thinking about restoration about wholeness. We all have some part of us in need of healing in our bodies, in our minds, in our souls, from our past and in our present, for the uncertain future, in our hearts and in our thoughts. Some hurts we carry on our sleeve, and some can be coaxed from us, and others we show only to our nearest and dearest, and some we will need you to unearth for us. Help us to trust and understand and be open to your many ways of healing as we open our hearts to your love, as we offer up in prayer the people that we name now. We pray for Betty, Brad, Carrie, Donna, Elise, Marion, Todd, Trevor, Dave, Marg, Sherry, Roberta, 
Sophia, Hannah, Shelley, Kathy. Receive also the prayers that we make in this silence now. Healing God, you bring new life to tired souls. You offer comfort to frightened spirits. You encourage us when we are perplexed. In all these ways, we are restored. Open our spirits to receive your call, to tell your story, so that we might be transformed. These many things we pray to you, our helper and our healer, our parent and our mother and our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A prayer so nice, we pray it twice. The closing hymn, Spirit God, be our breath. We come to God with our hurts and helplessness. We go forth in the power of Christ's healing and new life. We go with gratitude to tell good news of such great love. May this be our story. In the grace-filled healing and redeeming power of God, we look past our demons and find renewal and restoration. May the Spirit's unending peace journey with, be with us for all of our days. Amen. Thank you.